I we are back and well I'm not gonna be in control of this one. Uh Steve is so go Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey everybody. So this time around we picked the Terminator franchise. And it's sort of fitting because last time we did reboots and now Terminator is getting rebooted with Terminator Genesis. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. so we're here to talk about the four films and the two season TV series of the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Mm. Now this is a pretty well not complicated but kind of involved franchise. So maybe what we should just go around doing is just um maybe pick what our favorite aspect of this franchise is cuz I think we all pretty much agree on what makes it bad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Alex Alex is here as, as well by the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone. That's why I was going to make Alex go first. Okay. Oh, perfect. Um, <laughs> cyborgs from the future sent back to kill people, I think, is what makes <laughs> Terminator good. Um, the Terminator. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just the premise is really cool. But I think Steve and I were talking about this before we recorded, but the more they try and do, the more the premise stops working. But we'll we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I've dubbed that the, the Terminator paradox, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. <laughs> Magpie? Yeah, I I think oh it hasn't really worked one hundred percent since the original. I think that that the more human you try and make the uh, the Terminators, the less cool it is. <laughs> it's kind of similar similar in the way to the Borg in Star Trek. The more the more you Peel back the uh, curtain, the more not not good they are. (laughs) They could maybe like actually run in that direction if they wanted, and like Skynet is realizing it's becoming more human or something. Yeah, like like, that. There could be a story there, but yeah, yeah. Um, But they haven't done that, so (laughs) (laughs) yeah. Um, Yeah, it's been (laughs) real. Steve, what do you like the most about Terminator? Well, let's see. Um, I've never been a huge fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I think he's got a really unique style, so I love the style of the Terminators. Like, they're always dressed in, like, weird, overcomplicated leather, and they've got the sunglass thing. (laughs) They just... Terminators just have a lot of presence, and I enjoy that about them. Um, That that works with the time travel thing, too, because... Leather is always in style. Oh, and yeah. It doesn't matter what era you send a Terminator <laughs> to. They can find something in leather to wear. Oh, yeah, of mm. course. And it's always convenient that every time they show up, it's like a biker bore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, maybe we should get into, I guess, what doesn't work, because we keep kind of hinting at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so since the premise is kind of weird, the premise is just the future is taken over by living machines called Skynet, and they send Terminators back in time to kill Sarah or John Connor to kind of stop the resistance. And like Alex said, we were talking about this, the Terminator paradox, which is that every time Skynet sends something back, um, like in T2, they send the T-800 or T-100, what was it called? Uh, Which one? In, uh, Arnold's T-800. Arnold, yeah, Arnold T-800. Yeah, they send yeah. the T-800 back, and they send the T-1000 back. And Terminator 2 is probably the, arguably the best in the film, but it starts this really complicated time travel paradox that just doesn't make any sense anymore. So the Yeah, well, I, I disagree with that. I think the first one's the, the best one. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, just, like, debatably, if you go, like, do a poll, most people would say Terminator 2 is the best, is the thing. Like, it's mm. the best reviews. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I'm not, I'm not, like, talking for any of us. I'm just saying, like, generally go on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever. The, yeah, okay. the um, time travel works perfectly in the first one. It starts getting messier in the second one, and then it just it totally unravels after that. Yeah, the more you try to make that time travel make sense, or the more films you make, no matter how good they are, will always make the premise weak. Because the first one is, like, it's a hard time loop. Like, Skynet sending the Terminator back to kill Sarah Connor... And the resistance sending Kyle Reese back because of it is what causes John Connor to be born, which leads to Skynet being defeated. It's right. perfect, perfect time loop. Um, it sends something back in time that causes its own existence. With 
the whole theme of fate or like the future being what you make it in the second one, it becomes sort of a soft time loop because Judgment Day gets pushed back, I guess, and everything mm-hmm. sort of starts to unravel. And you can the ultimately, and we'll get into this with the Sarah Connor Chronicles TV show. The only way any of it starts to make sense is if you have alternate universes and alternate timelines. Mm. And that kind of destroys the whole franchise if you think about it, right? Yeah. Because that means you can never stop Skynet because then there will always be a Skynet because there will always be a parallel Earth. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the interesting thing, too, um, and this might be kind of an okay direction to take this, and that's the opening text in the very first movie says the final battle happens in the past, meaning really the first movie was meant to be it. And then they came up with a cool idea for the second movie that mostly worked Mm. and they did it. And I'm okay with that. After that, it just falls apart. (laughs) Well, the cool thing about the end of the second movie was that they have this very strong message of time is basically what you make it. And there is no kind of predestination. And the and yeah. the premise was made on the idea that there is predetermination, so to end it on that note is cool. Mm-hmm. But then everything after that contradicts it. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of want to bring in some of the religious symbolism in this franchise, too, because in rewatching it, I finally clued into that. Um, I don't know why I missed it before, but... It's it, subtle. It, to some degree, I mean, the Messiah character's initials are JC. <laughs> that, that's maybe yeah. not the most subtle thing in the world. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's more, I guess, where with the Sarah Connor Chronicles uh, TV series that it really becomes super explicit. But, yeah, Steve, you were talking about this with me before, and that's like, is Skynet supposed to be the devil? Is Skynet supposed to be nature? Is this change in whether or not predestination predestination is a thing supposed to mirror the evolution of Christian thought or something? I don't know. Like, is it's this a, is Terminator supposed to be a theological debate? <laughs> well, the complicated thing about it is that Skynet is man-made, and it's kind of like Lucifer, where it's like the best angel or the best thing we've done as a society is we had technology, but then... So it's like, it's it's applying Christian theology to humanism. Yeah, in a weird way. But then the weird thing about it is then Skynet turns kind of like God because its ultimate message is to kind of eradicate all the bad things in the world. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure what they're trying to play off with Skynet because it, it kind of knows everything and does everything can do whatever it wants, mm-hmm. but it also comes from something else. So it's both God and the devil at the same time. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's an important thing because they call judgment day judgment day and right, exactly. you know the implication is humankind fucked up somehow and that was our judgment that was our punishment and in the third movie um which we can get into um you know this theme sort of gets brought up by with john saying that his destiny was not to prevent judgment day it was to survive it meaning that you know i guess it's supposed to be a judgment and we can I guess, win the trial or lose the trial um, somehow and, you know, be freed at the end of it. So defeating the machines, I guess, is supposed to lead us into becoming better and not this sort of, I I guess, decadent society that existed before mm-hmm. Skynet. But that's kind of an, an angle that they don't explore too much. It's just sort of implied. Magpie, any thoughts? <sighs> Yeah, I, I kind of noticed that this time around, uh, the religious subtext, and I was like, oh, it, I guess they're like, yeah, I guess it's there, the, the Messiah thing. But um, I, I think they were subtle enough about it. They didn't have to rub it right in your face. I, I think that there was opportunities to further explore the John Connor character that they didn't take advantage of especially in the uh, second two movies Rise of the Machines and Salvation they kind of did a good job exploring that character in the in the series but unfortunately that got cancelled didn't it <laughs> yeah with a really cool cliffhanger 
<laughs> one of my favorite cliffhangers, really, and we're never going to get that paid off because Josh Friedman, who did the show, said, you know, he's never going to reveal what they had planned after that. <laughs> I mean, they should because it's such a unique dynamic to take the show in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so maybe do we want to go into the Sarah Connor Chronicles a little bit? Because that tries to bring all three movies together in a way and tries to explain yeah. the time travel. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, am I wrong? Or in the first one, is, is it supposed to be uh, 99 they travel f forward through time? Yeah. Yeah. But, it, it's yeah, well, it starts in 1999, and then they end up in like 2007, I think. Well, Sarah Connor was supposed to be dead by then, right? Because of the cancer. The, well, mm -hmm. Yeah, according to the third movie, she was supposed to be dead by then. <laughs> but so, I, we, uh, uh, but the, it's only con contradicting one movie, and yeah, it doesn't bother me that much. <laughs> But they still kept the, the, the cancer thing in there, so they, they do try and bring everything together, but... Uh, well, the show actually premiered before the third movie, so... Oh, did it? Yeah. No... Or, or maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm, I got that. Because I thought the show no, was yeah, in 2008. Oh, I, I'm totally wrong. I'm thinking of Salvation. <laughs> yeah, he's thinking still. T3 came out in, what, 2003? 2003, 2004, yeah, something yeah. like that? Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah sorry. well... Set up. Yeah, uh, but I, I like it. So, I like the Sarah Connor Chronicles enough to where I can really like. Well, <laughs> I stuffed up, uh, but that's okay. They're trying to make it better. Sarah. I think the Sarah better Connor Chronicles kind of solidifies that the determinism angle that the show always tries to play off of, or the series always tries mm. to play off of. Yeah. Yeah. Because John Connor is supposed to be a very, very specific person, and it doesn't – before this, at least, it doesn't matter what kind of choices he makes because certain things are always going to happen, and he's always going to have to end up that way. And then the Sarah Connor Chronicles tries to add in this thing where if he doesn't make certain choices at certain points, he won't be able to. But yet Judgment Day and Skynet are all still going to happen. So it's like this weird compatibilism hybrid that the series was mm -hmm. never really – doing before mm -hmm. they try and have it both ways yeah and i mean that's that's essentially what compatibilism is right like it's trying to do both determinism and free will and it just i don't think it blends as well as they think it does i would agree with that because <laughs> <laughs> the whole um parallel earth thing kind of nicks that theory a little bit because all he's doing is mm. creating parallel earths every time he does something that isn't necessarily john connor or mm -hmm. like it, does the way it work, you know, be that, like, the future changes? Like, yeah. there is only one future, but it's because things have gone back in time. It's changed many times, but then that contradicts, like, other stuff. It just doesn't work when you really sit down and think about it. Well, yeah, because Jesse has that one fake memory that Derek... Well, not fake, but Jesse has that one memory that Derek doesn't, because they come from two separate points in time, and we're not yeah. sure whether or not it's different points in time or if it's different Earths. Mm. That's it's interesting how they play with time travel in in the sh in the in the show. It's just um, <laughs> it's weird. It's weird how they do it. Do you guys think the show would have worked better had it not been in the Terminator franchise? Would it have just been basically a Terminator knockoff? Because that would have sort of liberated it from, you know, having to, to tie all the stuff together and would have allowed it to to sort of explore things in its own way. I think the problem with it not being tied to Terminator is that the whole mythology or kind of pedestal that John Connor is on wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. up until that point, we would have never seen what that John Connor was. We would have only seen like John Baum as he goes by in the show. Yeah. And that's always been my problem with the show is that I don't know what John Connor is like. Even even with like all the Terminator history before, we don't know who John Connor is. We just kind of know who the the present kid is. Is yeah. that maybe kind of a good thing though? Cuz like is it maybe better that it's vague and he's just supposed to 
you know, grow up to be this leader and we can sort of fill in the blanks in our head of whatever our, you know, ideal version of the leader of the human resistance would be. Um, mm. And, you know, keep it kind of a mystery like that. Because the cool well, thing, think... uh, the cool thing about two for me with young John Connor is like, yeah, he has some cool skills and stuff, but it's like, that's not a guy that you can necessarily envision growing up to be John Connor or like maybe you can and that's the interesting thing is to see how people change over time well they're trying to play up like the the kind of general-esque decisions a lot with his character in that show like um he always gets berated when he does things that are just normal by our standards and not like military and sacrificial mm-hmm. so I don't yeah. I don't get how John Connor, or at least what Derek's version of John Connor, how he can always sacrifice people and do these like really hard utilitarian decisions, and everybody still trusts him. <laughs> yeah, because they play with that in Salvation a lot, and like he even says point blank, like if we act like them, then what is the point? And I feel like that lesson was kind of gotten across to him in the second movie, because that's he basically saw his mother turn into a Terminator. Um, and that's what the yeah. whole film is about is the human basically becomes the machine and the machine learns to be human. Yeah. Yeah. And there really isn't much of a separation there as soon as you throw in that free will case. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Star Trek now that you mentioned that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I do. But I, getting back, getting to the second film a bit, I, I have problems with that film. Uh, I told Steve this is that about an hour into the film, the T one thousand just disappears, and the essentially from the film entirely because they're, they're, the threat seems to just disappear, pretty much. But there there is some interesting character development in that. But the well, it kind of uh, takes a break to tell a bit of a different story with the Sarah going yeah. to kill Miles Dyson. Yeah. But the, I think it's a it's a, this problem I have with it is that yeah that's just uh. well speaking of Miles Dyson I guess that brings up a criticism you made earlier I think it was on Twitter where you said why doesn't Skynet just send a Terminator back to build Skynet yeah exactly um or uh, you know another thing I I posted more recently was like. Okay, you can send things back in time as long as they're wrapped in meat, basically, <laughs> and the meat is alive. So why not just wrap a nuclear bomb in, <laughs> in meat and send it back in time to L.A., and then boom, no Sarah mm-hmm. Connor. That would be mm-hmm. easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> I would imagine it would be easier. But that's kind of the yeah. problem, and, and I think maybe why I kind of feel like the future should be more mysterious and and us not having answers because you kind of have to go to one extreme or the other. You have to go and specifically explain every single detail of how all of the time travel works, why they couldn't send 100 Terminators back to kill Sarah Connor in the first movie or in the second movie to kill John Connor. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. does it require super large amounts of energy to send things back in time? Is the time travel linked so you can only perpetually send things 20 years back in time or something well we know Um, that's not the case because the terminator that went back in the 1920s yeah exactly um so because of that you kind of have to i I think go to the other extreme and that is explain nothing leave it totally mysterious so and we can just have a big question mark there and say we don't know why things work this way well salvation was supposed to kick off a new trilogy that was uh, supposed to wrap up with um uh, the John Reese character going back in time, uh, as the way I understand, it. but the but uh, obviously that never happened because of mm-hmm. various reasons. Uh, but then I'm hearing things about Genesis now that say it's supposed to split off from the first movie at some point. So I guess they're rolling with the alternate timelines now. Well, they kind of have to. They kind of have to because uh, while Carl Reese wasn't set back until like 2029, mm-hmm. the uh, Judgment Day seems to get just get uh, in quotes rescheduled all the time. <laughs> time, but yeah. um, because originally it was supposed to happen in like 97, and then supposed to then it was supposed to happen in like 
2011 or something. Uh, they keep yeah. trying to push it back because because they only make a Terminator movie like every ten years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I just uh, I I forget where I was going. <sighs> <laughs> well, maybe we should touch on how each one of these films always like turns into another genre. Like the first yeah. one's a thriller, the second one's um like a sci fi action film. The third one's kind of like a mystery a little bit. And then Salvation's uh, like a war movie. Yeah. It's, uh, and I, I didn't like have them Yeah, I didn't have, I, I I didn't mind Salvation as much as people made it out to be. It was just like uh-huh. <laughs> Salvation it was just terrible. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Salvation really makes me scratch my head as to whether or not all of these films are supposed to be in the same canon. <laughs> yeah, I oh. don't know. Everyone pretty much makes me think that. <laughs> I don't think any of these films post-T2 could fit into the same canon as the thing. Yeah. Well, uh, Salvation was kind of the the movie we wanted, uh, the want, wanted because we wanted to explore that um, post Judgment Day world. But the problem, because I think we'd done everything we could in the present day. That that's what I thought. But the problem is, they're killing Terminators with um, bullets, and and. My only justification is, well, they're probably uh, armor-piercing bullets because it's the only way it can make any kind of sense. But um, yeah, but they they show in that movie to and kind of explain like technology, uh, like the timeline changes, change how things play out. But also, the Skynet is advancing far faster than they had predicted, and so yeah. they presumably like I always assumed that the plasma rifles they had were technology that they stole from the Terminator. <laughs> And used again. Yeah. Them. So yeah, I thought about that yeah. when I, I thought about that because I w- didn't watch these movies in, all, in in order because I wanted to watch the ones that I hadn't seen, the stuff I hadn't seen, which is Salvation and the Sarah Connor Chronicles. But because the yeah. T hundreds are only going online in Salvation for the first time. Yeah, which I thought was cool, and um, I didn't particularly hate the. Uh, the CGI effect that they did for the T-800 in the movie, but, um... Well, if you're going think... off of that, or at least the T-800, don't you guys remember in the first film where Kyle Reese mentions that they were close to winning the war, which is why they created the T-800 and sent it back oh. in time to kill Santa Connor? Yeah. So, why do they need T-800s if they're so far advanced in the in Salvation that the human race could possibly keep up with them? Yeah, because <laughs> mankind is, like, barely surviving in Salvation. Yeah, yeah they can just do point. whatever they wanted. They don't need Terminators. Yeah. Like, Terminators are a very specific purpose. Like, James Cameron wanted them to be the infiltrators. Like, they were supposed to be assassins that helped Skynet win the war, but Skynet was basically won by the time we got to Salvation. Yeah, and when, yeah. when you really think about it, like, if you're going to build an army of robots, like, why build them to look like humans unless you're trying to yeah. infiltrate yeah, exactly. The thing thing I thought they should have done uh, with Salvation is um, John Connor knows it's a sta- it's a stable um, timeline. He knows what's going to happen. But the problem is they kind of play it off that Skynet knows it's a it knows the the past as well. That it knows its own past, which is really weird to me. It knows it. Yeah, that doesn't that make that, any sense. Yeah, they know that they got to kill John Connor, but I thought, well, what, why do you know that? You shouldn't know that. You should think John Connor's a nobody. It's yeah, and weird. this John Connor isn't necessarily competent. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't mm. see why everyone is so folk fixated on him, at least in Salvation. Hmm. Like, because does Salvation technically take place after three? It like would have maybe... to take place before the first movie. Doesn't well, it's it. Yeah, well, Kate Brewster is supposed to be in in, in it. Um, it's just played by a different actress, and I'm like, you know, why? yeah. Um, well, I just want to double check. Yeah, the... that is her. Bryce Dallas Howard plays her in oh, okay. Salvation. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, that's the thing. It's like it seems like salvation operates from the assumption of oh, the audience knows all this stuff, so every all of the characters in the movie should know this stuff, <laughs> and it doesn't mm-hmm. work like that. But I, you know, I like that Michael Ironside made an appearance in it <laughs> because you know, I like Michael Ironside. Yeah, but, but Batman uh, versus Darkseid. <laughs> uh, um, well, I guess Michael Ironside voiced Batman. Um, yes, he did. Yes, he did. In the uh, that little short of the Frank Miller thing, so it's like yeah. Batman versus Batman. I kind of wish they cast him in The Dark Knight Returns, but you know that's another debate. I, yeah, I had to. <laughs> yeah. Um. It was. Just, we kind of glo- glossed over the fir- first two movies in a way, I think, too, because, like... <laughs> but <sighs> Sal- uh, Salvation does have its problems, but I I think they would have been... Had it been, like, pre... Uh, had we gotten another one, we would have probably looked at it as, well, the, this was the introduction to a new trilogy and wouldn't be so harsh on it, but... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, like, we... Salvation needed to either be like a remake or a fresh off reboot, mm-hmm. and it would have and... worked. They just call I it thought... like Terminator reboot because that would make sense. <laughs> like through machines. <laughs> yeah, that's an amazing. But I bet. still would have liked to, to have seen uh, them at least show maybe the fir- maybe the the first. Terminator going back in time because again it's time travel so mm-hmm. they wouldn't have had to immediately send back Carl Reese yeah I think it, that could, would... it could have been interesting if they'd started there rather than tried to end the trilogy there yeah like the movie begins with you know them storming the compound or whatever and they find Skynet's time travel machine because um, like they they heard about it somehow and they're like oh crap we have to stop this thing and then you know, John is like, Kyle, you need to go back. Well, I mean, I guess that kind of lends to the theory that it didn't matter for the humans, because if they had access to time travel theory, they had the opportunity to send, like, one of their best soldiers, Kyle Reese, back, and it shows that the humans really weren't that bad off. Mm-hmm. So all they really needed to do was kind of stall Skynet in the past so they could win the war in the future, and they were right about to anyway. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it all goes back to their defense grid being down, and the humans were on the brink of victory. Time travel was their last ditch effort to try and win. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like Skynet was on the ropes in that first movie, but it's not the case with any other of the films. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the more I think about it, the more I think like it's only the first movie that really works. One hundred percent. It's only the first movie. Yeah. Um, I've got a, an interesting thing for you to go. Is what if in three, instead of instead of um Arnold coming back, we got Robert Patrick coming back as the the pet, uh, the protector? Because I like I kind of like the uh, how did it have gone this way? The previous villain being the the uh mm-hmm. the hero in the next film um well and yeah what, what would you have thought about that because i the, i think the main uh, one of the main problems though in the in that film is that we get the tx which the it's uh resiliency is whatever the plot requires it to to be yeah. because <laughs> uh, there's times in that film where I'm like, okay, it should be dead now. <laughs> I don't know. They, I'm someone who doesn't think Arnold should be the face of the franchise. At least like, not for yeah. longer. I think you know it works for him. You know, in the for him to be there in the first two movies, I think that they explained it okay in the third movie that you know that is the yeah. specific unit that killed John Connor. And the reason it looks like that is because he had a sentimental attachment to that unit. Um, but yeah, that could have mm. been interesting. Um, the, the, the TX is sort of problematic because it's like, I get that Skynet adapts, but at the same time, it's like, let's just combine the first and the second film together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had that idea, but it, it doesn't really work in the, this Film, uh, it doesn't really work in Rise of the Machines because uh, it's it, it. 
it gets killed, but um, there's various other times in in that film where I'm like, okay, it should be dead now, uh, but it just keeps it just keep, keeps coming. But the like, you can understand why it's uh, why the T eight hundred survived in certain aspects in the fir- in the first one. You can mm-hmm. kind of understand why um, the T one thousand survived. In, a whole, bu- a whole bunch in Judgment Day. It's just the TX doesn't want to. <laughs> do and, and we even see like the T one thousand take damage in a way because after it gets frozen, it's all glitchy. Yeah, and yeah. it takes a longer cool. time to re to like reassemble itself every time it gets worse injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and obviously you guys watched the director's cut then because like it was malfunctioning. <laughs> Because that's not not present in the uh, original cut. Okay. Yeah. There. We should maybe talk about that because there are several versions of that movie. Um, yeah. Um, one it has a terrible, terrible ending, where it's it's Sarah Connor, it, like as an old woman, and John is like a U.S. senator. Yeah, and Judgment Day never happened. Sacri- it's the most saccharine thing ever. <laughs> it yeah. Was pretty bad. Well, that. That was just a deleted scene. I didn't. didn't I like. I've only got the director's cut. Yeah. And apparently, well, there is a. Th- yeah, I think there's the theatrical cut, director's cut, extended edition, and then there's like the Blu-ray special one that adds all that stuff in. There's a version oh, really? too. It wasn't the one that I watched anyway. That had uh, Kyle Reese in it again. Oh really? I I, the no, I saw that. No, you know I saw that one. That's the director's cut. Yeah, like when she's okay. in the hospital uh, after she gets beat up by the um, by the orderlies, and then she kind of hallucinates um, Kyle Reese. Oh, maybe I just missed it. Yeah, yeah, I think you missed missed that one. Maybe, the, but that's there's the several only two versions s- of the film anyway. They're all kind yeah, of I, the same, aside from that one with a terrible ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I mean, it doesn't really matter which version you watch per se. Yeah, just don't watch the one with the terrible ending, because <laughs> I saw that ending and I was like, oh god, I'm glad they didn't go this one. Because <laughs> I have, uh, I uh, I do have problems with that, but... um, It doesn't fit I just, with the tone of the rest of the movie. No, definitely not. Yeah. Although I could see maybe if you kind of have the battle in the past go far enough that the happy ending could be that. Yeah. I don't know. It reminds me a lot of the ending to the Matrix trilogy, where it's like they're all in the park and everybody smiles and like everything's yeah. gonna be okay. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I. Um. So, what is it that makes the first? Uh, what is it that do you think that makes the first one so works so well? Because it 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 is the one that one hundred percent works. Because I think it's that they they. There's like enough in that one to where you, the threat just seems constantly there. E- even in the 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 bits where they do sort of uh, get away for a little while and are able to keep ahead of the the T eight hundred in that one, because it and I think. That's the one where, where where there is the most obvious character arc, where Sarah Connor does become the actual Terminator in that film <laughs> by the end. Well, I don't think the character stuff with Sarah Connor works in one as well as it does in two. But yeah, at least as far as like the thriller or horror stuff that works so well, it might also be because every time you see any of the characters in the film that aren't the Terminator, they're talking about the Terminator. And when you see the Terminator, yeah. he's always doing something that's just completely off base, not what you're used to seeing or hearing. The, yeah. the threat is constantly felt, and he feels totally unstoppable. Yeah. Which is the point, and which basically makes it like the perfect chase movie. Yeah, it totally is the perfect yeah, chase Because you can't stop him. <laughs> he can't be reasoned with. <laughs> can't be bought, bullied, beaten, or paid for. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Uh. And of, I think that's. I think that's that. And, and and that's kind of missing in in Judgment Day a bit. 
It just well, I mean, doesn't fit. I guess fit. Judgment Day is, isn't really trying to be a chase movie, is the thing. Yeah, I know, but it's... It only sort I of just happens. don't... Because that's the thing, like, going back to what Magpie brought up, like, they basically stop the movie in the middle of the movie to tell a different story and then pick up yeah. the original story again. Yeah, they just want to add to the mythos of the franchise in that one. Because I, I honestly don't think James Cameron had any intention of making another film. It just... No, no, it. he didn't. Yeah, he wanted to keep uh, um, things wrapped up by two. Even though there was hints in the... Um, if you watch the, some of the deleted scenes from the first one where they hint at making uh, another film, or at least keeping it keeping that idea of it's why it's uh, the Terminator essentially creates Skynet because it was sent back in time. So that maybe brings up an, an interesting direction to explore in that. Do you guys think rather than focusing on the Connors, you could have continued the Terminator franchise with Terminators being sent back to take out other people in the resistance? Well, and that way you could have kept the hard time loop and everything like that. Well, that's kind of there in T3, right? Yeah, yeah, because um, they couldn't find him because he's off-grid. And um, I guess Season 2 had like a good couple of episodes where they were doing the same thing in Sarah Connor Chronicles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um, that works. My problem is always with something like that is that we don't know these people and what they're supposed to be. We only know who they are right now. Mm. And I kind of wish that we at least had some kind of justification or some kind of hint at, like, why these people are going to eventually become such important figures in the Resistance. Like, at least in um the first season of Sarah Connor Chronicles, I have no idea why John Connor or how John Connor would become important in a leader. And um, with that general kid they get in the military academy, it's the same problem where I don't know what makes him so great. Yeah, they kind of mm. just tell and they don't show... Yeah, basically. Um, like, the the franchise is always about kind of determinism. I just wish that they kind of demonstrated the, the hard nature of these people is consistent throughout whatever age. Mm-hmm. I wish they were more determined to keep with the determinism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I wish um, that um, when we got to John Connor in, the, in T3, he was more... Uh, he is kind of competent. Uh, he, um, I don't. I don't think competent is the word, but he should have been more like his mother was in T two, which is like this mm. unstoppable guy. He's, he's still not a hundred percent sure of himself in that movie, and I wish he. I wish he was more like the um, John Connor from the future of the. Uh, for, I mean... uh, like from Salvation, you mean? Yeah, closer to that than what he is. I kind of disagree with that because with two, they kind of like they know or at least think that they they closed the time loop. They stopped Skynet from ever being uh, created. So maybe he just kind of got lazy. <laughs> mm. um, like that makes sense. Like if you think, okay, we averted you know disaster, then. You know what mm. need is there to prepare anymore? Mm. Unless you unless you focus in on the Sarah Connor Chronicles, because oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. What well, I think we're kind of nudging towards a direction of maybe what could Terminator do in the future. So, do mm. any of you guys have like kind of a wish of what Terminator should be in maybe the next film? Maybe not Genesis, but just if you could bring the Terminator franchise into a certain direction, what would it be? Well, I wouldn't want to just, um, I wouldn't want to do any more in the past. Agreed. Essentially, you'd be just replicating the formula again, and uh, I'd want to be in the, face it during the war, and um, have it end with... Uh, the sending Carl Reese back in time and be the, but begin the film with the Terminator being sent back in time and showing that the war is sort of turned 
in the favor of the humans and there's no stopping them <laughs> now they're gonna come barreling through and not have like another terminator set up at the beginning of the film and just so i can have a heart transplant at the end of the film <laughs> <laughs> i see the thing beating a mile a minute <laughs> uh, yes alex what about you um that's kind of tough because i i feel like because of some poor decisions that they made already with the franchise, they kind of have to go to that one extreme and explain, okay, this is exactly how the time travel works. Um, I'm, weirdly enough, most interested in what happens after they defeat Skynet, like yeah. how does civilization rebuild itself. And that yeah. wouldn't really be a Terminator movie. That's the problem. <laughs> but that's where I find the most potential for an interesting mm -hmm. story. But, uh, yeah, it just wouldn't be a Terminator story. Well, I think what would be really cool is if, like, we had a film set, like, really far in the future where humanity rebuilt itself and you kind of oh, show oh. that um, people have to live with technology, but they aren't comfortable with it anymore in a way they are right now in, the, in our present. And then yeah. maybe Skynet is just the AI inside of a single Terminator body, um, and that kind of forces itself to become human. Well, the thing that they sort of explore, or I think we're hinting at with the Sarah Connor Chronicles is that, you know, there are good machines. And yeah. And it seems like they kind of hinted that there's a third faction of machines that don't work for Skynet. Um, that was the whole, you know, please deliver this message to John Connor. We say no kind of a thing. Um, mm. And that's supposedly what Shirley Manson's character was doing, was building the anti-Skynet Skynet. Skynet. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, I want to see... Yeah a future post the defeat of Skynet where there are good Terminators and it's mm. basically, okay, um, do we kill all of them? Do, are they people? Do they get to live in our new world? Like, and do we have a right to build any more? Yeah. Um, how do like, how does mankind post the singularity, um, deal with technology again? Like, would there be laws that say you can't build a computer more powerful than such and such? Would anyone ever want to? Yeah, mm. I don't know. Because the whole thing about technology is it exists to solve our problems. So, like, would we create some or try to create a benevolent Skynet? Because, um, like, I can see, I sort of see the franchise, like, if you went that direction going going in like either one of two ways you either go the, the dune route where you know they're basically in the, the whole backstory of the sci-fi dune series um there was like a robot war and basically after that they decided to never build thinking machines ever again um or you go like the matrix direction where eventually somebody builds another skynet and we go through this whole cycle all over again hmm. well um Maybe some of these questions will be answered because apparently there's going to be a new series of on TV, a new television series is going oh, to be developed. Yeah, I read that. Um, I don't know. Like, is, I think it's supposed to be working in conjunction with the new movie, which mm. I wouldn't think advises a good idea. <laughs> well, the thing is, in the Sarah Connor Chronicles, I kind of like the future stuff that they were doing, like they. They realized that they were doing everything on a budget, so they, they didn't try and do anything too crazy. Oh, no, I get that. Like, I just think, like, if you're going to make a new Terminator franchise and it's going to be a reboot, you have to understand how limited your explanation has to be or how extremely thorough your explanation has to be, or mm -hmm. it's not going to make mm -hmm. sense anymore. And if you add another TV show, that's going to be really hard to keep up with. Mm -hmm. I think the thing, if you're going to yeah. do a TV show, too... You have to explore a different element of this universe because I, I think, Steve, I mentioned this to you before we started recording, and that's I, th I don't think Ter Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles should have been the Sarah Connor Chronicles. It should have been, okay, this is about a resistance cell that, okay, maybe it's led by Derek Reese, so we have some type of connection with somebody that we know there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just explore a different side of the Terminator universe that we haven't seen before. Because otherwise you are just rehashing, um, you know, the second movie again. Yeah, exactly. But there was definitely elements that I loved about the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Um, oh, me too. Yeah. I that there, there I had some problems with the first season, but the second season, they, they actually knew what they were doing. 
<laughs> which is why it's so sad that it got canceled because it, it could have made for a really interesting look into the Therm- Terminator world. It had mm. really found its footing by the time it ended. Yeah, definitely. And, so. Yeah. Well, that that's maybe an interesting thing to explore because we talked a lot about John Connor and the potentially different versions of him that we seem to be seeing, and that show dealt with that a lot because Cameron, the Terminator, uh, played by Summer Glau, who is awesome. Yeah, mm. apparently somehow is influencing future John, and we have a whole character who goes back in time to prevent her from influencing him because apparently he's making terrible decisions and stuff. And that's interesting because she doesn't come from the same future as everybody else. Yeah. Mm. And then John is just completely fed up with the whole prevention of Skynet and trying to be mm. a great leader, which is understandable. I forget, I forget what the the character is that was sent back, but I like that they – uh, unlike what they're doing in Arrow with their Aussie character, they actually made the <laughs> <laughs> they gave the the Aussie character in Sarah Connor Chronicles Aussie stuff to say, which was really cool for me watching it. I was like, oh, I understand that. I understand that. Oh, some carrots and apples as a real phrase. Yeah, apples. She'll be apples is is an Aussie phrase. Yeah, I need to start saying that. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> well, how did you feel about? The, the submarine stuff, because they were sailing from Perth to, I guess, L.A. Which Perth makes no like, friggin' sense. I was going to say, like, <laughs> Perth is on the other side of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> like, do they go all the way around? Like, maybe, uh, yeah. maybe that's just because yeah. they have to, or... Because mm. that's, that's half of Australia is less densely populated, right? Yeah, yeah. So maybe they were less hit by... Skynet there or something, so they have yeah. space. I don't know. Um, yes, but if just it, I, when they said Perth, I was like, wait, I need to look at a map. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and it makes no sense for for them to be eating off rabbits there because the rabbits were on the are on the other side of the country. <laughs> and you you can't live with rabbits either. There's there's actually a term that's called rabbit starvation. Um, because oh. all of the, the voyageur and all the, the fur trapping guys came here to Canada and tried to, like, they trapped rabbits and they, they ate rabbits, but rabbits are so lean, there's not enough fat on them to support yourself. <laughs> it's basically well, just eating. That's, that's insane. <laughs> well, they were just wow. trying, to, trying to stay alive. I gather yeah. they weren't just eating off the rabbit, but, like, that was what she was wanting to eat most of the time. But, yeah. No, but, yeah. It, they should they, if they just change Perth to Sydney, it would make so much more sense. Because then, yeah, because I love the metaphor of the rabbits in that though, because they're talking all about you know how they completely overrun the place and stuff, and it's like, okay, is that a metaphor for humanity or for their machines? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. It was <laughs> really cool. Um. So it was a cool character to have, and unfortunately she was evil, so she had to die. Well, we don't know, because we don't know, we we don't know what the future was like. You know, maybe she was doing the right thing. She had noble motivations, anyway. Mm. Well, she clearly had, like, some extreme PTSD also. Oh, yeah. So it's hard to say whether or not she's acting rationally. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a... Which, uh, I guess I want to mention this really quick. I think it's cool that Terminator does this. Every character has PTSD before they actually go into any kind of combat. <laughs> like Sarah yeah. Connor and John and Derek. Like, all of them are in the present and everything's okay, but they still always have PTSD. That's a, that's a really cool concept. Yeah. Yeah, they just had a different traumatic experience. <laughs> But can we maybe talk about Sarah Connor just a little bit? Because we we have seen this character at roughly the same age, played by two different actresses. Yeah, and I think we yeah. get we see more Sarah Connor than we see John Connor in at least the franchise's history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jay, I, anywhere you want to go with her? I kind of prefer Lena Headey's performance, but I think that's only because we only got to see four hours total of Linda Hamilton. Whereas Lena Headey had, you know, two full, uh, you know, seasons of, a, or I guess that's more, it's really more a season and a half of a TV show to work with. Yeah, the first season well, was only like six episodes. Yeah, it was. It started mid season, I think. Yeah, the thing, thing, thing about um, that is, uh, 
she really was able to capture um, the essence of what Sarah Connor was in by the end of Judgment Day and extrapolate her performance from that, which is really cool. And being an actor in training, I can um, really appreciate that because that's not it's not an easy thing to do. But, yeah. No, it's not. And that's that's kind of why I'm even more impressed by it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how great is that tension-filled scenes when she kidnapped the little kid and trying to act like a good mother? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Like she's just incapable of that, but that's all she's trying to do. She's she's literally the extreme idea of any mother of any in any history. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, talk yes. about tiger moms. <laughs> yeah, talk about her. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of wouldn't mind talking about John Henry a little bit too. Yeah, John Henry and the actor who plays John Henry and Cromartie is actually really good too. Yeah, good, yeah, uh, Dillahunt. Yes, and I, I was almost I, sad when they killed Cromartie because I didn't think we would see any more of that actor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I kind of cringe every time they call him Cromartie though because that last name is pronounced Cromartie. Um, like I I grew up with people or around people with that last name, so <laughs> <laughs> that just made me grind my teeth every time they say it because it's like Cromartie sounds like you know a, a five year old who's like a slow learner trying to sound it out <laughs> syllable by syllable. <laughs> So they just kind of sound mm. dumb to me when they pronounce it that way. But I guess that's um, kind of going to the debate of John Constantine or Constantine with the comics and the movies. Yeah, it's Constantine like wine. Um, but yeah, it's um, just amazing that he was able to play two completely different characters and play them both so well. And both completely blank stoic characters at the same time. Yeah, yeah and they feel completely different. Yeah. Um, that guy needs an, an Emmy or something. Oh, yeah, he was fantastic. And was it his Terminator or was it another Terminator that was in the first episode that pretends to be a teacher and just pulls a gun out on John Connor? It's – yeah, it's it's his, but it he his? gets the, the facelift later because he yeah. loses all the, oh, okay. the meat and then has to regrow it with Elliot from Breaking Bad. Right. <laughs> right, right. I remember. There were a lot of Breaking Bad people in this. Hank was in this too. <laughs> The, I uh, noticed the thing. nuclear power plant. There's, yeah, there's a lot of different actors that I noticed from other franchises. I found um, what's her name, Jesse, um, the Australian woman. She's in Battlestar Galactica. Oh, which is, is also she? a thing. Yeah, she was in Razor, the TV movie, mm-hmm. um, cool. which is oh, also okay. a thing about fighting robots that that try to destroy humanity. And the girl who jumped off the roof at John's school played. Uh, Zoe, the main character in Caprica, the Battlestar Galactica prequel. So there are a lot of weird tie-ins with this other franchise that's all about killer robots and stuff. <laughs> wow, that's pretty awesome. Mm. But um, I just... Well, I guess we can also tie in Summer Glau was on Firefly, and she, where she fights killer man-made monsters. Yeah. yeah. So that's almost the same thing. Summer yeah. Glau's of being on shows that get canceled. I <laughs> hope Arrow doesn't get canceled now. Because <laughs> we just found out think, that I show that she's also insane in that. Yeah. Yeah. She never plays a sane oh. human being. Yeah. Uh, and you got Le- uh, Lena Headley, who yeah. plays. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, Lena Headley. Yeah, who's in Three Hundred, which is about a, uh, a war and <laughs> a war. Uh, uh, I guess there's no killer robots in that. Just really. Stylized violence. The closest thing to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. I feel like if Frank Miller was allowed, he would have added Killer Robots to that book too. Yeah. Well, probably. He probably would have been charged with less, you know, racism towards Iranian people had he just made <laughs> oh, it like oh. Space Three Hundred. <laughs> Three Hundred, the space epic. Yeah. Yeah. They have um, to the planet. <laughs> So is there anything else you guys want to touch on before we close this out? Um, I don't think so. Just to sort of, I guess, reiterate, it's only, I guess, the first movie that that totally works. And I love this franchise despite all of the problems. It's loads of fun, but I also recognize Mm. that the more of it we get, the more problematic it gets. 
Yeah, it gets yeah. smarter and stupider at the same time. Well, <laughs> uh, this is interesting, guys. Um, I've looked up um, the critical reception for each film, and they gradually go down. Uh, according to Wikipedia's rating w- with regard to Rotten Tomatoes, uh, T1 gets 100%, T2 gets 92%, T3 actually... Not too bad. It gets seventy percent out of two, that's out of two hundred reviews, by the way. And Terminator Salvation gets uh, a very low thirty three percent. Although that's also that, out of two hundred seventy reviews. Yeah, that's a uh, two hundred seventy reviews. So it gradually go. It's gradually gone down. Even though I don't particularly think Rotten Tomatoes is a, a good um, barometer for my taste in films anyway, but... It varies but, on whether or not you agree with it. <laughs> uh, yeah. But not everybody agrees with what the, the general consensus on things is. So. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's the thing. Plus, I'm, I'm somewhat skeptical of, just maybe this is completely off-topic, but of <laughs> professional reviewers, because they have to... It's their job to see stuff that they know is going to be crap, or they know yeah. is not going to be the kind of movie that they like to watch. Yeah, and they also get desensitized to certain genres really quickly because of how much they have to see. Yeah. Yeah. So they have a completely, like, to what degree does a professional reviewer, um, unless they get to dictate, they're like a YouTube person, they get to dictate what they review, like, to what degree is their opinion on things skewed just because yeah. of the job? <laughs> That's a really fair thing to say. Because honestly, they don't have the same perspective. Like, Roger Ebert probably saw superhero movies ever since their inception to present day, Mm -hmm. and he clearly must have gotten tired of them just because he's been around and was forced to watch all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we've got us who love comic book movies, and we we aren't forced to watch them. We just do it because it's fun, so we're less Mm -hmm. harsh on them, I guess. Well, and that's just our taste. We like that kind of thing. You know, yeah. If you don't like westerns and you're forced to review western movies, you know, are you going to give it uh, – like, is your opinion going to be skewed just because you don't like that type of movie? Especially when you have, a, like, a paradigm where it's just a barrage of the same genre. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, because westerns were, like, all they made for, like, 20 years. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they have all the backlots out there in Southern California. <laughs> And then if, you, mm. if you're if you a reviewer who grew up during all the classic films that are now being remade, then you must be so much harsher on it just because they're literally playing on your nostalgia every other week. Yeah. Mm. But that, that kind of goes back to your point about what type of Terminator movies do we want to see and how everyone is somewhat of a different genre. What genres are there left besides, like, straight-up romance? Um, well, Joss like Whedon wanted Western. to buy the rights to Terminator. I think he would have made a pretty good Terminator romance film. Mm. He would have made it work. Oh, yeah. Except yeah. it would have ended horribly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one would have been happy, but it would have been a good uh, <laughs> Yeah, the show would have been great. But the... <laughs> I kind of wondered if they were building in that direction with Sarah Connor Chronicles with John and Cameron. Yeah. There was a lot of tension there. Yeah, it was. I didn't like that, and I was like, "Why are we going here?" <laughs> it just wants to be creepy. Well, then I also <laughs> wonder, like in the future, how robotic she really is. Like maybe John found a way to make her as human as the T eight hundred in Terminator two. But we mm. saw too specifically the the Allison from Palmdale thing of they they tried to model that Terminator's personality on a real person. Yeah. Which is the creepiest thing. Yeah. Because yeah. she so starts it, channeling that personality. Yeah, because you could, you could go in that direction with it of Skynet. It has to... The Terminators are trying are getting so like humans that they basically become humans for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I mean, if you give them the dynamics to think like a human being, then what's stopping them from, um, from being human? Yeah, or siding with the humans. And how human are we really if all we're ever doing is just expressing views based on cultural norms that we're kind of indoctrinated with? Mm. Yeah, so you could have a whole interesting angle of Skynet gets turned on by its own creations the way Skynet turned on humanity. Yeah, mm. or maybe human humanity just collapses after Skynet just because we are as robotic as them by the end of it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, anyway. Yeah. A um, lot of interesting directions we could go. Yeah. Um, are any of you guys excited for Terminator Genesis? Or... Because I'm kind of indifferent uh, towards it. Yeah, I'm sort of the same. They have a good cast, it seems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Although they had a good cast for Salvation. Yeah. I, I'm going to wait till the trailer, but at the moment I am somewhat optimistic that maybe we'll get, get something that we really want. But um, if it's just another rehash of like the first one, the second one, and the third one, it's not going to be that good because <laughs> I'm going to be like, I saw this film already. Yeah, exactly. And, and I liked it, then I liked it less, and then a little bit less. <laughs> You know, because we have Alan uh, Taylor directing, how cool would it be if it was a Terminator going back to, like, Viking or medieval times? Well, Amelia Clark's in it, so it, it crossover Terminator with Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> the Stark family is just Terminators. Yes. That's ironic. Anyway, um, do you want to close out with, with this note of Terminator Genesis? We're still waiting for some news. Yeah. 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 But we should, um, uh, Alex, uh, you want to tell everyone what we're doing next time? Oh, yeah. Um, what we're going to be covering next time is uh, a film that we learned today some of us have a differing opinion on, and that's uh, Blade Runner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically the so, final cut, correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, though yeah, that... We can probably discuss the earlier ones, too. Um since, I mean, in discussing the final cut, we have to discuss why there is a final cut. Yeah, that's true. There's a long history about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I missed the narrations. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I guess we are still on the theme of uh, robotic people in the future who kill people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, stay tuned for that. Um, I'm... <laughs> going to be interested to hear what everyone says about it because <laughs> that, that's going going to be interesting. Well, but, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and spoil it now. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. So, <laughs> Yes, I, I yeah. quite like it. Um, which I'm sure you can fill in the blanks which one of us has a differing <laughs> opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll... Um, so stay tuned for that as um, I have to go once again through Watching Blade Runner. <laughs> okay. That's a gift to me. <laughs> I've been looking for an excuse to watch that movie. Uh, but uh, finally, uh, meeting adjourned, gentlemen. Uh, we will be back where we'll be running with blades. <laughs>